No other planet offers us more than Saturn. And it's the rings. And the, what Cassini and Voyager have done uh, is just amazing. The, the pictures that we, we now see from them. And the changes in Saturn, we're, we're studying the changes of all the planets and we're featuring Saturn today. The changes at Saturn are many. There's not just one change, there's several. And they're all symptoms of the same phenomenon. The northern vortex at the North Pole has shrunk and no longer spherical, but now hexagonal. You tell me what does that. Well, the astronomers have already told you. They say it's resistance. Resistance from what? They won't tell you, but you already know. It's from cosmic rays and the second source of solar wind. The moons of Saturn also tell a story. Many of them are not spherical. Many of them are rocky, but some of them are not. Some of them are big enough to maintain an atmosphere. And Triton is probably more Earth-like than people are willing to admit. But what's a gas giant doing with so much water in its ring system? It's like there was a collision. And indeed, a collision is told about in clay tablets and ancient writings. People who have no should have no idea what's going on in the solar system had advanced knowledge of our solar system. The Cassini probe has returned so many spectacular images that to me, the, the cost is insignificant to what we've gained. And the changes in Saturn are, are really explained by the appearance of Nemesis. And if that's the case, then all the planets should be changing, including Earth. Because if you're shedding cosmic rays throughout the solar system, you, you can't just single out one planet and send your cosmic rays towards just one planet. This brown dwarf nemesis is shooting out cosmic rays in all directions. And then it's, they're being captured by the sun and heavy planets and focused into these planetary systems. And indeed, we see changes throughout the entire solar system. Mars melting ice caps will feature that. Its moons are changing. Jupiter's moons are changing. But this is called Pan. I call it Pan. Some people call it Pan. But that's a moon that really looks like hybrid debris. And again, tells a story of massive collisions taking place in our solar system. Other changes seen in Saturn is the aurora activity. What on earth would increase the aurora activity in Saturn? And why does the increase in aurora activity in Saturn mimic the increase in aurora activity of planet Earth? And that's because the increase in activity is caused by the same thing. A failed star, nemesis, in our solar system. And the auroras on Earth, we've chronicled them. We've, we've featured them. It's amazing, uh, the, some of the auroras that have occurred in the past few years. All because there's more electrons and more plasma in our magnetic field and in our planetary systems. It's very logical. If you're going to change, 
and create resistance in that northern vortex, shrinking it down, slowing it down, creating a hexagon, then those particles have to pass through the magnetic fields of Saturn. And when they do, pass through the highest density of electrons. It glows. It glows. And and the thing is, is some of that light is in ultraviolet. So you can create ultraviolet frequencies in your magnetosphere, which would explain the, the amount of extreme ultraviolet being measured on the ground here at Earth. We're featuring some of Nemesis Maturity's work. Um, we want to link uh, all of these channels that we're featuring here that have studied Saturn. And we want to give them their due credit. Um, but this video is being made under fair use and for educational purposes. We do not make money off this video. And we do advertise for the people that produce and did the hard work, wonderful work. So, so we're learning so much about our Earth by looking at Saturn. We're learning a lot about our solar system by looking at Saturn. And more and more, when the more we look, we're starting to get an understanding of how Earth was formed by a collision. People want to say that comets singled out Earth, bombarded us so many times it gave us these massive oceans. But where are they now? How come we're not how come they singled out Earth? Indeed, it's more logical to explain that one giant massive rocky icy planet collided with a star, a, a dead star and created hybrid debris, hybrid planets, mixing of water and ice and fire. And isn't that Earth? Do we not have fire? Where do you think the helium comes from that's venting from the volcanoes? Do you think Earth is fusing hydrogen into helium? I don't think so. So that helium is a fingerprint. It's it's the scent of of something that collided and created our planet. It accounted for the tilt of the solar system. And the Cassini probe has actually captured huge cylinders in the orbital rings and near the orbital rings. Of Saturn. If I was an extraterrestrial, I would want to hang out near Saturn too. I would enjoy that light show a lot. But there is a lot of ice and a lot of water in that ring system. The, the Cassini probe actually had a second probe called the Huygens probe that actually plunged into the atmosphere of Triton. They predicted methane oceans, and they didn't see any. That was kind of disappointing. I wanted to see a methane ocean. I didn't know what an ocean of methane looks like. And, But they found methane lakes and evidence of methane lakes and geysers of gas um, being created um, depending on the seasonal changes of Saturn itself. So Nemesis would account for the ellipticality. Nemesis would account for the asteroid belt. Nemesis would account for the comet belt. Um, and it would account for how our Earth looks today. Yes, it would. It perfectly explains the model is simple. A collision between an icy, rocky planet and a fiery, hot brown dwarf would then melt a lot of the silica iron rock, would evaporate the ice 
into a very thick, dense atmosphere. Then as the crust cools, it'll trap the heat. The heat works its way inward through gravity. And the the crust gets thicker. And the core gets hotter. Next thing you know, we have a magnetic field. Next thing you know, all that condensation comes back down onto the planet as it cools. And that creates even a thicker crust. The heat from that brown dwarf is allowed to escape the core through crevices, fissures, and volcanism. And by studying other planets, we can really understand planet Earth. And conversely, by studying planet Earth, we can understand our solar system. So, I encourage you to check out the Voyager and the Cassini documentaries that are on Amazon and on Netflix. Um, They're spectacular. Um, The images are clear, colorized, and there's many, many of them. But the one thing that I meant to oppose upon you is that whatever you do to one planet from Brown Dwarf, whatever you do, you have to also affect the other planets with the same phenomenon. So the cosmic rays that are slowing down the northern vortex, shaping it into a hexagon, and creating more auroras should be affecting Earth too. And indeed, our cosmic ray counts in the stratosphere have steadily climbed. Our aurora activity on Earth it peaked in such a spectacular fashion. It's just awe-inspiring. Um, we started seeing white auroras. People are like, white auroras? They, they were clamoring and scrambling to try to figure out and explain why Earth is having white auroras. But when you replace heli- hydrogen with helium and you increase the number of electrons flowing through your magnetosphere, you're going to get white auroras. So until next time, I thank you for watching. Thank you.